Welcome back to the Bear Make It YouTube channel. Today we're going to make this pin that I'm writing with right now. Well, you won't see me make this pin, but we'll get to that in a second. So as you probably noticed, uh, what I'm working with now is much different than the pin I was just using. This is zebra wood, and I'm just getting the uh, size that I need for the two halves of the pin marked out on the blank. Got to be about two and a half inches each. So I just cut the blank in half, which gave me over two and a half inches for each part. And then I just had to get the holes drilled out to insert the pin tubes. And with my drill press, I don't have enough depth to cut through the blank all at once. So I had to start it and then move it up so it, the drill bit is already in the blank and then drill the rest of the way. A better way when I was making more pins later after this I discovered is to drill the first part of the hole with the drill press so it starts straight and then just finish it off with a hand drill. And it's got to get the tubes glued in. Just use super glue. You scuff up the tubes with just some sandpaper just to give the super glue something to really grip onto. And then just push them in there. And here I'm just using calipers to measure out how much extra wood there is where the tube isn't. So I can mark that off. And then to save myself time on sanding, I can use the bandsaw to slice that off at the line. And here you can see it's about half an inch. Just slice it off and then head over to the sander to true it up. Get it all the way down just until you can see the shiny part of the brass where it's just started to sand the brass. And then get it set up on the pin turning mandrel. And it's time to start turning it. And for that, I'm using my new carbide tools. It's a set of three Easy Wood Tools has, and they're set up really for small turning, like pins and small work. And I like it a lot better than using the high speed steel tools that I have, which I don't think is anything against the high speed steel tools in general. I think I'm just not good at sharpening them and also I got cheap ones so that probably doesn't help either. And then with the basic pin shape turned down just start the sanding process. And between each sanding step it's good to turn the lathe off and sand with the grain just to make sure you're knocking down any high spots and sanding with the grain is generally better anyway. And then I just use this cheap brush to kind of brush off some of the sawdust between sanding steps. And here I start using the micro mesh. And I was using the micro mesh wet, so I started and then I hit it again with 400 grit sandpaper since I hadn't got the wood wet yet, just to knock down the wood fibers that raised just from getting the water on there. But then I just sanded all the way up through all the micro mesh pads, through the 12,000 or whatever it is they have in there system. Got it nice and smooth. And then with the sanding done it was time to start applying the finish which I used boiled linseed oil and then super glue. You just alternate put on a coat of boiled linseed oil and then put super glue on. You dab the super glue onto the paper towel or whatever you're using right where it's touching the wood so it gets rubbed in and then you do a couple coats using a fresh paper towel each time gives it a nice smooth finish. I actually used fewer coats on subsequent pins that I turned because I liked more the actual wood filling where you can still kind of feel the wood grain. Whereas with how many coats I did on this first pin, it gave it almost a plasticky feel, which I think helps protect the wood better in the long run since it's a pin you're probably gonna be using, handling it a lot. I just like the feel of it better. So we'll see how they hold up over time and I might change my mind on that. And then I just had to get the pin assembled. Which should be a pretty straightforward process. You're really just squeezing the parts together. It's all friction fit, but it's a really tight fit. But me, being a dummy, misread the instructions. So here I'm putting like the twist mechanism in the wrong part of the pin. So essentially this first pin that I made is it's not good you can see it here like it's all backwards 
it didn't work. So really just whatever pin kit you get, just make sure you read the instructions carefully. Learn from my mistake. Don't just, don't just assume you know what you're doing. Make sure you actually know what you're doing. It makes things go a lot smoother. And now I actually have more pins than I need. I'm keeping a couple of them, but I decided to set up an Etsy shop just to sell the ones that I don't need just laying around the house. So I'll have a link down in the description below if you're interested in that. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see our future videos. Any thoughts or questions about the project, leave them in the comments down below. Thanks so much, you guys. Have a good day.